This episode is sponsored by 928's R Us. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to catch up on my Porsche 928. It's been into the shop uh, to see Matt at Collector Car Services to get all its mechanicals looked at in anticipation of my trip to Amelia Island. But before I get started with that, can I give a little plug to my Instagram account? You get updates in advance on what's going on in my life and also uh, and mainly, I should say, with my Porsche uh, 928. So consider having a look at that. I'll put the uh, address up on the screen right here. And whilst you're listening to me, why not consider subscribing to this channel? Anyway, let's get on with it. All right, you guys, we are back with Matt. Hi, Matt. How are you? What's going on? What's going on? Well, we'll find out, won't we? Because <laughs> I am so keen to get this car back on the road here and see what you've been up to and see how many surprises that you've had along the way. I suspect that there were quite a number of surprises along the way. Yeah, this one, it fought me a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> quite a lot of deferred maintenance there. And, you know, I, I guess what we've done here, I hope, is to give it sort of a really deep service and sort of bring it back up to a fairly good standard. Yeah. Um, you know, the trouble with these cars is they became very affordable for a long period of time. Yeah. But it still requires Porsche maintenance, which is not cheap. Um, so a lot of stuff that should have been done over the last 10, 15, 20 years has not been done until yeah. now. Yeah. So, you should know, we have a look kinda... at it, see what you've been up to? Yeah. Um, and then we'll take it for a spin afterwards. I'll open up the hood. The light so then, let's have a look in here. So that is a bit cleaner. I have to say. Well, you can notice it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It yeah. means I did something. <laughs> you did. You certainly did. So, first thing that I, I notice here, actually, is this lovely radiator on here. Because we had some coolant problems. And, and that's fought you along the way as well, hasn't it? Yeah. So, we knew we needed a new radiator because it was leaking. Uh, we knew we were going to do all the hoses. But as I pulled everything apart, you know, there was all this built-up corrosion and... and the antifreeze had to be, you know, 20, 25 years old. So yeah. um, we went a little bit further. We ended up doing the thermostat. We did oh, yeah. the lower thermostat seal, which is actually behind the thermostat. Um, those are known to rot out, which yours was completely rotted out. Of course. Um, and then I put it like half together and ran some coolant flush through it, dumped it all again, got a bunch of junk and stuff out of it. Yeah. And now we've put it back together. Um, I would suspect it'll still need some flushing, you know. And I'll flash up the on the screen uh, the old water pump, uh, and you'll see that is sort of crystallized. Yeah. Uh, it was an accident waiting to happen, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm shocked it wasn't leaking, that yeah. the seal inside the water pump was still good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you flushed and flushed and flushed it, but you still think that we've got some work to do on that, on, um, the, on the coolant and the... I'm suspicious of the heater core. Yeah. Um, it, it's got very slow flow going through it. Right. Like, I could force the hose through it, and it just kind of trickles out. Um, I was able to get some big chunks coming out of it. Okay. But it's uh, time will tell if we can save the heater core if we need to replace it. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll save that for another. Yeah. Hour. We've probably <laughs> done enough for now. Yeah. yeah. And you, then, you bit off a lot. Oh, yeah. God. Well, we're trying to do the best we can here. Um, the other key thing that anybody who looks at a 928 was really talking about was the water pump and timing belt. Mm hmm. Uh, now the water pump I've just talked about a little bit what about the timing belt how is that so the timing belt was actually in pretty good shape um, yeah. I would suspect it was maybe five to ten years old which oh, right. technically is too old for yeah. these cars but it probably had minimal mileage on it okay um, okay so yeah there was no cracking there was there was um, no evidence of the teeth failing yeah. But it's like one of those things you do it for peace of mind. Yeah. Um, and then we, at the same time, we were able to do the tensioner, which was yeah, good. Yeah, how we was that? that? So Roger at, at 928SRS sent me that, um, which is the sort of latest, I guess, piece of new technology for these 928s, just to keep that timing belt taut. Yeah. How was it in terms of fitting it? Did you have any trouble with it? No, it was, it was easy. Yeah. Um, it was great because it uses, uh, I believe it's like an Audi style tensioner, yes. which is just constant tension. Yeah. Um, so as the belt stretches, it keeps taking up the slack. Um, yeah. But getting it on, setting it up, it was it was really easy. That's good. That's good. So I was re I'm really glad that we did that. And what else did we do? We had, oh the steering. We replaced all the steering rack and everything on this, didn't we? Because whenever I braked, 
I didn't know what direction I was going to end up and whether it was the ditch or the inc- the oncoming traffic, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, you know, that was really like, oh, that, that, that should have been done a long time ago oh, really? with this car. The I was rack, driving, I was driving the inner tie car. rods. Oh, yeah. yeah. The outer yeah. tie rods. I mean, everything was just so worn out. The rack was leaking like crazy. Um, so we did rack, inner tie rods, outer tie rods. Um, got all of that back together, ran it for a bit, and then we had the upper hose was leaking, the pressure side. Um, so that went back, did that. Yeah. Um, doesn't leave a spot of oil anywhere now. Oh God, that's so, so nice. that's, I mean, that's huge for, for a It was embarrassing wherever I took this because you could see where I'd been. Yes. Yeah. By the splats of, it was either steering fluid or power steering fluid or brake fluid. You know, you could see yeah, it was where everywhere. I'd been. And, uh, and you did the brakes as well. So we've, we've replaced pads, rotors, and some of the, the hoses as well. Is that All right? the hoses, yeah. All the you, hoses, We yeah. did uh, stainless braided hoses. Nice. Um, yeah, pads, rotors, and then one caliper was kind of gummed up, so uh, yeah, I took that apart and rebuilt that. Yeah. Um, everything else is good. And there was a lot of rubber stuff along the way as well in here. That we did you... uh, spark plug wires, because um, those were starting to crack. All the coolant hoses, um, the oil fill hose. Just kind of, it, it was all dated, it was all cracking, it was all falling apart. Yeah. So we've got a car now that is approaching reasonableness. Yeah. Without being a concours, <laughs> you know, sort of uh, winner of, of competitions. This is, what do you think? Is it a reasonable, usable car now? I think we're, we're at that point. You, that you point, can yeah. confidently drive the car. Yeah, which is kind of nice, really. Is yeah. It's something that will stop, and when you do stop, doesn't shove you off into the ditch, yeah. you know? Um, what do you think needs what, what have we got left to do on this to make it a you know even better you, you looked at some of the electrics as well didn't you yeah so um, the very common with these cars the ignition switch it affects kind of all the 80s Porsches um, the ignition switch is worn out so I noticed one day I went to move it and the window wouldn't go up yeah. and um, I started looking at the window you know there's a there's a relay there's a, a fuse I'm checking all of that and then come to find out it was just the ignition switch. Just if I just wiggle. jiggle the key, yeah. then the windows, everything came That's to life. That's called character. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to rob it of its character, but probably we do need to fix that. Yeah, that, that could leave you on the side of the road one yeah. day. At least I think they're a bit notorious, aren't they, for their, their grounds, of, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. We might be chasing that a little bit. Yeah, there, there's a couple other issues. Uh, the gauges are very inaccurate. Yeah. Um, they're kind of all over the place, yeah. um, which that could just be a simple ground, but finding that ground will yeah. be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the heater is... Oh, the heater, is, that's the next thing, isn't it? The other, yeah. I would say right now it's adequate. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I drove it when it was cold and I stayed warm, yeah. um, but it's not, it wasn't hot yeah. coming out of the vents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, so we've got a, a few things to do left to it, but we've done the important things, would you say? Yeah. We've... Yeah. we've my first and foremost on all cars is safety and reliability, and I think, you know, we hit that with this. Yeah. Well, I'm really pleased. I'm quite looking forward to getting it out on the road, actually, and, and having a look at it. But why don't we have a little look around your shop before we, before we go? I know that um, the last video I did up at Westchester Classic Cars and Body Works uh, went, quite, went down quite well looking at their shop. I wonder if it might be an idea to have a look around yours. Let's do it. Okay. Well, as if one transaxle Porsche wasn't enough, Matt, you've got one of your own here, haven't you? Yeah, I love 944s. And the good one, the good news, is that this is for sale, right? So tell us what you've got. So this is a uh, 86, so first year of the oval dash. Um, low mileage, about 67,000 miles. I just went through it, serviced it and everything. Um, I bought it like five years ago with every intention of driving it every day and just never got around to it. So um, I figured now is the time to kind of let it go to somebody else, get a little bit more room in the shop. Yeah, well, that's, that's beautiful. Now, if you are interested in this lovely car and you want to start off your transaxle, transaxle collection, then give Matt a shout. Collect a car services in Danbury and you'll, uh, yeah, I think you'll have a good one because if Matt works on something, it's done properly. As opposed to if I work on it, then it's going to break down. Yeah. There's Matt laughing about it. So let's have, a chat, let's have a walk around your shop then. And I see parked next to your car something rather special here. What uh, have we got it's, here? It's this is a run-of-the-mill uh, 275 GTS. <laughs> uh, <laughs> doing a full service on it, getting it ready uh, for the driving season. 
Yeah. Um, so we'll do spark plugs to tune up. One of the fuel lines is leaking. Um, the hood cable broke. Um, I put a battery in it just to kind of get everything going. It hasn't been driven really in two or three years. So get it, you know, driving again. I actually rebuilt this engine about six or seven years ago. Did you really? Yeah, and it's only well, got a few it. hundred miles on it. Right, now, okay, so. so it's in really good shape. Yeah, it, it is, it, it, run, it does run and drive good, it just needs a couple little things and then the customer yeah. could take it and uh, have fun with it. Wow, okay. Yeah. Now we have a, a, a duo of Corvettes here as well. What's going on with these two? Um, so this one, this is a 64 Corvette that's kind of been a basket case its whole life. It was a race car for a while. Um, so it's got the, the thumper wide body flares. Um, so the customer is kind of going for a L88 kind of tribute car. So uh -huh. we've built the car with all period correct parts. It's a period correct 427, L88 aluminum heads. A lot of L88 uh, parts are on it. Um, and the final result is gonna be kind of like a street legal race car. Um, cool. Something that he can uh, enjoy, but also take to the track. Very nice. Um, and then and the, the black one? The black one, this is a 62 Corvette. Wow. Which was restored about 15, 16, 17 years ago. The paint is kind of starting to fail on the nose and um, he doesn't really drive it much on the street. So we're converting this and now into a race car. Oh. Um, so we're gonna put wider wheels and tires on it. We've got a racing seat that's gonna go in it. We'll do a roll wow. bar, um, five point harness. Um, it's already got a pretty stout engine in it. It's a small block with aluminum heads made about 310 horsepower to the wheels yeah. um, It's got a Tremec 5 speed. So wow, it's a, it's a good car Quite for a the modern track. gearbox thing. Yeah. yeah, okay, nice Now this is an incredibly rare Ferrari Matt a 575 is it? 575 Super America. Super America. Now it's the Super America bit that makes it rare isn't it because it's got the the roof that folds back, is that yep. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's a carbon fiber frame with glass and it essentially unhinges here and rotates back. Yeah. But also the tint of this, the tint of the roof, you can adjust. Oh, um, really? There's a dial in the, in the center console and you can make it almost black or you can make it almost clear. Is that factory? Um, that's factory. They're known to fail. It's I was incredibly say, expensive it's Italian, to repair. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's more of a novelty than anything, but it, yeah. it's really cool. And what's this one in for? Um, just doing some light service and getting it ready to be sold, actually. Okay. Wow. So, we're selling cars here on the J. Reed YouTube channel. If you're interested in a Ferrari Super America 575, then Matt can put you in touch with the owner sure. here at Collector Car Services. Now, we've got something here which looks a little bit like a Singer. It's sort of like a Resto mod, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so somebody took a 72 911S and kind of went after like the RSR look yeah. with a mixture of Singer. Um, so it's got kind of a modern interior. It's got a 3.4 liter punched out to a 3.8. Um, so my customer bought it on Bring a Trailer, sight unseen, got it delivered. It's, it was pretty terrible. Um, run ran really bad. It drove really really poorly. Kind of wandered on the highway all by itself. Um, I know how that feels like. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I've corrected a ton of uh, suspension geometry. Um, the weight balance was actually way off. Uh, uh, the best really you want out of a 911 is a 60 40 split. Uh -huh. This was like I think 71 percent rear weight oh wow um so i actually bought 150 pounds of lead and bolted it in the nose of this car really to to settle everything huh. um how did it now it drives up? great how did it end up with the weight balance so out of whack um i think for one they've got the larger motor in back oh yeah um the fenders the hood the bumper all of it is fiberglass uh. um so they've shaved weight from the nose which is already light yeah. and then they've added weight to the rear yeah um so wow. I, I think that's why it ended up being so off. And then they got rid of the factory fuel tank. They've put a fuel cell in it. Um, they got rid of the factory, nice, big, heavy battery. Put a little tiny racing battery in there. Just all compounds um, the problem. Yeah. yeah. So it just, and are you getting close on it? Are you, are you, uh... I've got it now to the point where it drives really great. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting yeah. for the customer to come in and, and drive it himself. The last time he drove it, he was terrified of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. 
last time I drove it, I was able to rip down the highway, weave back and forth, have fun with it. Oh, and that's it, good. it never felt like it was wandering or doing it's anything. It's a lovely looking thing, I have to say. The red leather and the, the chalk paint, it's beautiful. It's a good color combo. Yeah. Um, yeah, they did a lot of stuff right and then yeah. a lot of stuff wrong. Yeah. Oh, right. Now let's look at this baby here, a Ferrari 512 TR, 512 TR, I guess they say over here, Matt. Yeah. You, you do a little bit of storage here as well, don't you? And this is one, I think, of your storage customers, is that yep. right? Yeah, so he dropped it off. Um, we did a little bit of work to it. Yeah. Um, and then he said, just store it here. So I'm actually storing about four of his cars here. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we owe to be him. Yeah, so um, this particular car you've worked on as well, haven't you? Yeah, um, we actually put a 2B exhaust on it, which, nice. which is great, because yeah. these cars are too quiet from the factory. Yeah. Um, we had to re repair the uh, seat belts. These have okay. little mouse track seat belts, and they're known for constantly failing. Yeah. Um, so I got those straightened out, fixed the check engine light, just minor stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it runs and drives great. So this is a good one, then. This doesn't need a lot of work doing to it. No, you yeah. get in and drive this car. Needs to be cleaned up. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, I sympathize there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit dirty. Well, Matt, thanks a lot. Really appreciate the tour. No and problem. thanks for everything you've done with the 928. I cannot wait to get it out on the road. And the tour of your shop was just incredible. So um, we'll be back um, with the MG to give that a service yeah. in April at some stage. Um, but let's go out and get this 928 out on the road and see what it's like. Road trip! Well, we made it. The car is on its way to Amelia Island, Florida. <laughs>